Well, good evening one more time. It's so good to come back your way with the good news. And really, I never have anything to say but good news because God is good and God only gives good things. So I believe there's going to be some good things that's happening to you. I know that we're just getting on and and you that's watching us on Facebook, we just did a couple of little tests a few minutes ago, just teasing you just a little bit to let you know we got something really good that's going to be happening here tonight. I believe God is going to touch people's life. I believe he's going to minister to you. And I'm seeing people from Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, right here in Dallas, and just different ones that are joining us here that on Lightcast. And I'm not sure on Facebook because I'm not, uh, I'm not there. Let me see if I can pull up Facebook so I can see who's, who I'm talking to or who is watching me uh, uh, on Facebook. Well, I got a sound there, so I guess I'm on. Here I am. This is live. This is not. Free. This is not something we get the opportunity to uh, <laughs> edit and then come to you. So uh, here we are, Judy Nolton Bauman over in um, uh, Arkin or Missouri, and then Cheryl right here in Dallas. It's good to see you that are on and the ones that are coming on. We're going to have a Holy Ghost time tonight. Yeah. I've got my great friend. Uh, Art Osborne here with me, a great minister, uh, worshiper, one that loves God, can play, I think, just about any instrument in the world, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's good to have him here, Solly from up in Toronto, it's good to see you on, and uh, everybody that's coming on is just great, Tracy, I'm seeing you come on, Tracy Mitchell, my, what a mighty woman of God, if you have never been to a Tracy Mitchell meeting, you need to get into a Tracy Mitchell meeting. This woman can speak words of life. She can speak with power and anointing. And I'm telling you, it'll just send the Holy Ghost right through you while she's talking. And Ralph, I'm up in New York. My goodness, Ralph, I hadn't seen you since we were in Trinidad together. It's good to see you. My sister over in Georgia, uh, Anthony up in Toronto, or Niagara Falls. My goodness, Anthony, it's good to see you on. Margaret, and it just goes on. Michelle, Michelle, I'm just believing that your chemotherapy and all the things that you're taking, you're just going to be getting better. And we're believing the Lord to get in there with all of that, and he's going to do his word too. And Lisa, it's good to see you. My goodness, just so many people this evening that we believe God is going to touch and bless around the world. You know, God, we, when I started this broadcast, I didn't start to do this. I just started to have a prayer meeting, and all at once, things begin to change, and people from all over the world started watching us, and we're grateful for that. But anyway, we're going to be talking about shouting to the Lord tonight. You know, some days you shout and you don't feel like shouting, but that's one of the ways you can get a good breakthrough is to just shout those walls around. Because many times there's <clears throat> walls around us that Satan is just building and building and building and trying to stop and keep us from walking in faith. But I'm telling you one thing, faith is alive here in this room tonight and right where you are, and I'm believing God to touch you in a very special way. And Christine, up in New York, it's good to see you on as well. Anyway, it goes on and on. The list goes on. But let's pray and ask God's blessings on the meeting here this evening. Father, thank you for the people that's in the room with us here tonight. Thank you for all that's joining with us around the world, different places in the United States of America, and different places where people will uh, watch this later. We just pray, Holy Spirit, that you will touch every heart, every life. You will minister in a supernatural way. Lord, I believe this is a time that you've ordained for you to do a very special thing in this meeting tonight. In Jesus', Jesus. mighty name, amen and amen. Well, uh, we don't have as many in our audience as we normally have tonight, but you that are here, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. We're glad that you are here. 
Dean St. Pierre over in Alabama, and Jose, <laughs> oh, uh, and then there is uh, Graciela Ron Johnson over in Fort Payne, Alabama. My goodness, uh, it just goes on and on. Julie Benson, I'm, I'm just telling you I'm excited about what's going to happen here tonight because as I said just a few minutes ago, we did a little tease with Art playing his horn and of course I don't know what all he's going to play. Uh, we got the... Um, we got the shofar here tonight that he's going to be playing the shofar somewhere in the meeting here tonight. So you don't want to miss this. Now, Art, I'm not going to try to play this. And, and I'll introduce you here in just a few minutes. And I don't want to mess that thing up. But that is absolutely. Uh, I, I've been in meetings where you played that thing. We pl you played that thing in Israel. And we were in Caesarea in Israel, and you standing way up on those rocks, and I'm telling you, you begin to blow that shofar, I thought you was going to blow me right into heaven. <laughs> I thought the wall was going to come down. <laughs> anyway, uh, God is so good. God is so good. And before I get started with art, I just want to read a verse of scripture here. It's found in Psalms 35, 27, and it says, let them shout for joy and be glad, who for who, who favor my righteous cause and let them continually say, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So God wants us to magnify him. He wants us to praise him. He wants us to glorify him. And I just know tonight as we glorify and magnify the name of the Lord, God is going to do something very special. Anyway, it is so good to have my friend Art Osborne from right here in Dallas, Texas. Actually, he lives in Capel, Texas, which is a little suburb of Dallas. Not little anymore, it's just growing. <laughs> but anyway, Art and I have known each other, I guess, for 20-something years, 25, 30 years, yes. and we worked together. We had the opportunity to work together in meetings for about three or four years, That's somewhere right. along in there. That's but right. Art, good to have you here tonight. I love you, brother. Love you, too. Can I start to serve us off with a shout? Yeah, she sure can. Because you know something? The Lord showed me that when you blow this thing, the demons know that this is the sound that they're going to hear from heaven when the Lord returns. And it scares them. Oh. You know, Don, when you and I were in Israel together, I bought this. Is that really? You bought that one in Israel? That's the one that I bought. Wow. But I want to start us off with a shout. Oh, how, oh that's all right. Get ready, folks. Get ready. We're starting off with a shout tonight. And if they have any problems in their lives. Now listen to this. If you have any problems in your life, I want you to reach out to God as I blow this horn. This is not it's just a horn. This is God's anointed horn that he has anointed from times way back to set the captives free. So just listen to this sound. got touched. See, this happened, this happened in the Bible days, and this is what they used in Bible days. Many times instead of a trumpet, this was the trumpet that they <laughs> that's were... That's the trumpet they're talking about. That's the trumpet they were talking yeah. about in the Bible. And uh, Art, uh, you know, uh, you, you and I were... I, I'm not, I don't know if I was in that particular meeting that you were in, but we, we had these meetings, and uh, um, you were playing that shofar horn, and um, there were churches all over the United States and Canada and down in the Caribbean. And, satellite ministry. Uh, yeah, the satellite. Uh, and uh, you played that horn, and you said one pastor, um, one pastor said his whole church just fell under the power. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't me. It's not me. You know, I mean, I can feel the Spirit of God fill me up. And when I release it, I release it as unto the Lord. You know, it's like you when you start preaching. I mean, Pastor Don, 
He's just a, an average B-flat guy. <laughs> but I'm telling you, when he gets on that pulpit and wham, that anointing <laughs> hits you, and that's what happens to me. I, it's not me. I, I feel that surge, that unction flowing through me, and I know it's destroying strongholds in people's lives. Well, see, that's what I want people to realize tonight. We're not, we're not trying to do a show. This is no. not a show. We're here tonight to encourage you, and Art's going to be playing the sax. He's going to be playing uh, the flute, and I'm um, going to be blowing the shofar again in just a minute. <clears throat> so uh, I want you to understand when we're talking about shouting to the Lord, we're not just talking about making a noise. We're talking about shouting to the Lord and saying, God, we believe in you. I read in Psalms 35, 27, and I'm sure a lot of people were not on there, and I'm just seeing uh, my uh, brother and sister, my brother and sister-in-law just joining with us, and I'm, I'm so glad to see you joining with us from over in Alabama. But I, Art, just before we get started, I want, can, can you get up and blow that shofar one more time? I sure can. You know, again, you if wasn't on with us, we were over in Israel, and, and we were in Caesarea, and Art, we, we had about, I don't know, 150 people or so with us. Yeah. I'm not sure how many we had. But anyway, you was up on that big rock blowing that horn. And we were broadcasting live by satellite That's right. back to the United States of America, right. well, all over the all world. Over we the were, world. Uh, and uh, I'm telling you, supernatural things happen when he blew this shofar. And that we didn't plan to start off this way, but the power of God is in... Uh, giving glory to him and uh, I'm going to be talking about some things here in a few minutes and so is Art but uh, I, want, I, I want you to get ready uh, Michelle if you're still with us I want you to believe God anybody that's got cancer anybody that's got any sickness anybody that's got any disease whatever it is when he blows this horn again and we're going to have him probably do it several times through uh, and, and as I said Art and I worked together for Oh my goodness, 20, 25, 30 years. And uh, we worked together regularly for three or four years, just right week in and week out. And you were a blessing, Art, and you still are. So one more time, I want everybody to get ready. Here it goes. Now, just bear with us tonight. We got some new equipment in, and so if we're not getting switched quick enough here, you know, and again, this is live, so we didn't get to rehearse what he was going to do, when he was going to do it, when he wasn't. So just bear with us if we don't get switched exactly right in time. But I want to read a scripture here. Uh, Ivy from Ray down in Trinidad, just come on. Ivy, bless your heart. It's so good to see you. That's when our sister church down in Trinidad and uh, down in Mayara, uh, we were there not long ago, and I just wish I had a picture of our Grace Church down there to show you because uh, this is awesome people down in Trinidad. And uh, it's so exciting to, to know that God is right there in Trinidad or wherever you may be. But I, I, I read this verse of Scripture a lot, and I want to read it to you and give you a story. Art, you know, you, you, you play instruments. You've led a big band, you know, years ago. You know, you played with Doc Severson, and you played with some of the, all the big things. But one day, the Holy Ghost zapped you. <laughs> yeah, right like, at his church. <laughs> yeah, your spiritual father sitting right over there. And we're glad to have you here, Brother. Uh, Gary Adams. Gary, Adams. Gary we're Adams. We're glad to have you here with us tonight. And uh, isn't it awesome to see, here you sit there and see this man up here, uh, been all over praying the gospel music now and, and preaching the word, teaching the word, played for Kenneth Copeland. I don't know, you was with him for four, four years, four years, four years with Kenneth Copeland. And uh, anyway, uh, I, I, 
You've probably heard me preach this before, Art, but as you know, when we look back and see when God told Joshua and the children mm. of Israel to walk yes. around the walls of Jericho, Hallelujah. when he told them to walk around those walls, you know, to me, that is a, a, a real big deal because he gave them instructions to walk around for six days and be quiet and not say anything. <laughs> not say anything. <laughs> well, you know, that had to make the enemy nervous. You know, the people that was in there, that had to make them, what in the world is going on? All of these people walking around here and it's so quiet. But God said to him on the last day, the seventh day, yes. when you walk around, I want you to shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Amen. Well, Art, I've been privileged uh, since we've worked together, and I I've been privileged to, well, even before, but to go into many countries of the world. Right. And um, I was in a, a little town in Moldova. Well, the Moldova's a little country, but uh, um, I was in Chisinau, uh, that's the capital of Moldova about two years ago. And, and um, we had a crowd of people there, and I read this scripture, and I had them to shout for their country. You know, Moldova was a former communist country. It's right between Romania and uh, the Ukraine. Hmm. Little bitty countries sab uh, sandwiched in there. But anyway, we got up, and I told the people, and I got, a, I got the, uh, someone to give me a, a flag of Moldova. And I read this verse of scripture and I said, I believe God is going to do something in Moldova. i uh, got a pastor there, friend right now, building a huge church. I mean, it's miraculous because the, the pay scale in Moldova, you know, is $200, $250 a month. And how this pastor can build this church is only by the glory of God, only by the goodness of God. See, God can get in whatever is going on in your life and he can extend it and make it happen. Too many times we limit ourselves with our thinking and what's going on around us. But we prayed and we sang and we shouted and I read this scripture. And when I read that scripture, uh, we didn't have you there with us. We didn't have the shofar. We didn't have the trumpet. But we began to shout. And I've been places where we've had literally thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And I'm not exaggerating with these thousands either. Uh, I did it in Papua New Guinea where they was in the field. But I've never had anybody to shout as long and as powerful as they did in Chisinau, Moldova, wow. two years ago, this past June. So I'm, I'm just really excited about what God is doing. And, and the Bible said on the seventh time when the priest blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. We're going to shout tonight, for the Lord is going to give you healing. We're going to shout tonight, the Lord is going to save your children. We're going to shout tonight because the Lord is going to meet your financial needs. We're going to shout tonight Amen. because the Lord is going to heal you from where you've hurt, <clears throat> maybe from a, a lost relationship or something that's going wrong. God is going to heal the well, way where you hurt. Amen. Amen. My, my son Timothy over in um, Knoxville is watching. He said, tell you hello. Well, hello. Amen. Anyway, my niece, I'm seeing her join, and so many people are joining on with us. Art, what do you want to do first? Well, I, you know, I remember when you and I were in Israel on that tour, and the tour guide took us to Jericho. Right. And I remember there was a well that Abraham had opened in Jericho, and it was still flowing to that day. And so these were things that he was leading up to us to tell us in, uh, th that this was Jericho. You know, and he said, now, I want you all to look at the walls. He said, the walls, when they blew the shofars and they shouted, the walls didn't go wham. Do you remember that? I remember that. I remember that. The, I preached that a lot since yeah, then. And the guy said, God must have put his foot on top of those walls and pushed them down. And they walked right into the city. Well, it had to be. See, because if they had a fallen either way, yeah. as thick as those walls were. Oh, they were thick, yeah. Uh, or if they come down in, and if they were to fall down, you know, like blocks falling, right. and, and big rocks, which they were. Uh, if they were to, they would have had to climb over them and they could have gotten 
hurt climbing over those things. I mean, I know God would have protected them, <laughs> but, but that's just exactly the way it was. God pushed those things, disintegrated those walls. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to do a song right now, or you want to preach a little bit? I don't know, man. I, uh, I kind of like that, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus, if, well, I, if we could jump on that one. Yeah, why don't you, well, let's do it. All let's right. Do it. Everybody get ready, because... Uh, uh, as Art gets ready here, let's just believe God that uh, God touches you and ministers to you. Amen. Go ahead, Art. Hallelujah. We got a friend in Jesus, folks. Hallelujah. friend we have in Jesus. When I hear that song, Art, I tell you, I just, I just almost weep because I know what Jesus did for us. Amen. I, I don't know. Did you drop your microphone? Did I? No, I still have Still it got on. it on? I need well, remember, to Remember, we're on. live. We're not rehearsing. <laughs> and so if, if we don't get switched cameras just in time, we didn't rehearse and go over this tonight. So I want you to know that you've got a friend tonight in Jesus. And he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Absolutely. But I'll go with you to the end of the mm -hmm. world. Now, Art, I, I, I don't want to bring this up to bring any sadness to you. But I know that um, your lovely wife, Kathy, just recently went home to be with the Lord. Yeah. Um, a year ago, August the just, 23rd. The 23rd. Just almost going to be a year. But, um, yeah. She went on to be with the Lord. And that was a long battle that she was fighting through. Yeah, that. five years. And uh, you guys, you never gave up your hope. You never gave up your confidence. And, uh, and you know, I remember talking to you here a few months ago. Oh, yes. Um, well, you really ministered and helped me through it when, uh, after she passed, uh, you were the first one I called. I said, Don, why? And I never will forget what you told me, he says, Art, you don't ask why. He says, it's in God's hands. 
just rejoice that she's walking the streets of gold waiting for you. Amen. And you have no idea what that meant to me. And I was able to then turn around and minister to my family. And I know there's probably people out there tonight, Don, that have lost people and you're asking why. But move on with God. That's right. Get into his word. Find those wonderful gems that the Lord will show you and move on with God. Well, you know, I've been in meetings all across the country and around the world. And I remember recently being down in Mexico and we had a big Mason meeting down at, um, I'm sure you remember Bobby Crow. Oh yeah, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, well, we were doing a big meeting. Of course, Bobby's got a great church, seats yeah. about 4,000 people. Where about in Mexico is that? Ciudad, Ciudad Victoria. Ciudad Victoria. Uh, you might have been there with us one time. I don't even no, remember. No, I, ne I never had the fortune to go. Well, we were there and this gentleman come up to me after the, the meeting was over and uh, I, I believe that's where it was. Anyways, it's and uh, his son had been killed by some very bad people in Mexico, mm -hmm. but it had been like 10 or 15 years since it had happened. And he said, I'm still as raw and tender mm -hmm. as it would the day it happened. I and, uh, you know, some people, some people just don't know how to move on. Mark. Right. And uh, the Lord has really helped you. And I'm sure music has been a help to you to, uh, to move on from this. It's, well, when you said move on, I asked God, you know, how do I move on? And he said, serve me. Find that sweet spot where I can use you. Amen. You know, and God has used me mightily on the road when I was uh, traveling as a musician, as part of Kenneth Copeland's music ministry team. And and I had so many wonderful friends that I had met at Christ for the Nations before them, and they began to ask me to come. And one day, Pastor, I was in, uh, the crusade was in uh, Minneapolis, and I, I was asked to come and minister at a church, St. Paul, Minneapolis. And I ministered in music like I would, and then I ministered in the Word. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, stand in front of the people and play your horn and I'll bring healing and deliverance to them. And I said, right, <laughs> you, know, you know, man of faith here. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, so, you know, I, I began to talk to the people. I said, now, I, if you perceive me as a man of God and if the words that I have spoken tonight have ministered to you and the music that I've played for you, if they had been a ministry to you, I'm going to share with you what the Lord just spoke to my heart. He said, if you'll stand before the people and play your horn in front of the people, I'll bring healing and deliverance. And I remember those times when you would call a healing line up and you would go by and pray for them. And so I, that's what I did. I just followed what you did. And the people came up. I said, now, if you perceive me as a, a man of God that has the anointing on his life, that I can play this horn and bring deliverance, come and stand if you have a need. Well, there was, there was a line, you know. And so I began to play my horn. And I, I remember the second person, Pastor, that I played for. I then reached out thinking about some of the things that you would do. And I put my hand on that person. Well, they fell to the ground as dead. They didn't go bang. They went bang. And I heard the Lord say, I didn't tell you to touch them, did I? Mm. That's not your ministry. Your ministry is the music. And he led me to 1 Samuel 15 through 18. Now read this. Oh, please do. It says in 14, but the spirit had, had departed. The spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, King Saul then, and an evil spirit was troubling him. Now some translations say the Lord, but we know the Lord doesn't bring evil spirits to us. And then, and, and Saul, servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit is upon you and troubling you. 
He said, <laughs> in my terms, hey, Lord, King, command us, which are before you, to seek out a man who is cunning in music. Well, cunning is skillful. I looked that up. Cunning on his heart. Well, that was, this was David. They were talking about David. They were talking about the son of Jesse. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit is upon you, king, that he shall play with his hands. And God showed me that that was when I laid my hand on that instrument, that was like in James when any of you be sick, that they should call for the elders and they will lay hands on you. What is that? That's the releasing of faith. And they shall be well. And God showed me that's your point of contact to release your faith. Put your hand on your instrument. And I'm talking to some musicians out there right now. I'm talking to you. You get in the word. There's an anointing on your life, ma'am and sir. And God wants to use you in a mighty and a powerful way. Now, I'm 69 years old now, and I'm getting refired. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and it's all because of God and that anointing that's on, on my life. You can't shake it. <laughs> but it said, and, and thou shalt be made well. And Saul said unto these servants, okay, go get the guy. And let him play for me. Well, they went and got him. And in the 18th verse, now listen, musicians, here is your qualifications. This is what you need to live up to, according to the word of God, not according to me. And it's the son of Jesse, and he is cunning in playing. Now, that's skillful. Now, that doesn't mean that God can't use you if you're just playing a couple of chords and you're playing in a church wherever you are. But grow. Study to show yourself approved. That's what the Bible says. So, first, you need to be cunning in your playing. And a mighty man of val valiant, okay? In other words, strong. And a man of war, okay? You're not going to let the devil knock you down. And if he does, get back up. And a comely person. Now, this is very important, I think. The Bible even says, don't wear your work clothes into church, into the temple. And I think the musicians need to have a respect for God and the holy things of God. And don't come dressed to church in a trashy outfit. Dress yourself up. Just it needs to be a nice shirt or something, you know, and, and t take a little shower, use a little deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, the last, it says, and the Lord will be with you. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, when David played, you know, it caused that evil spirit to come down in, mm -hmm. in, in Saul. And so I know that God has used music so many times. In just a minute, I'm going to have you to... Uh, to play another song. I, I don't know whether you want to play on the, the sax or the uh, flute, what, whichever one. Maybe you, both. Maybe <laughs> both. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, we're talking about music, and my wife has talked about how when our son was killed, oh, yeah. it wasn't preaching that brought her through that. Wow. It was worship. It was really? listening to music. And, you know, she, she said, uh, I'm sure you preached some good messages, but I don't know what you <laughs> preached for a year. <laughs> uh, and, and really, she didn't, wasn't able to listen to preaching. It wasn't what ministered to her. Just like David, God used David mm -hmm. to play that harp. Well, I believe tonight, Art, as you play this next song, I, I just believe that... Um, people that are hurting, people that have needs, people that are bothered. Maybe you've got anger. Maybe somebody's got anger. You know, this I've never seen people so angry as they are today. Oh. I mean, yeah. this thing that's going on right now in the news, all this stuff that's going on, these people that are fighting each other and carrying on, and everywhere you turn, you see young people, you see road rage, and it's because people need the goodness of God yeah. on the inside of them. And you know, um, the Bible says, make a joy, in Psalm 66, 1 and 2, make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise 
glorious. Hallelujah. Give Make thanks. his praise glorious. Yes. And that's what we're doing here Giving tonight. thanks. We're giving thanks. We're giving praise. You know, uh, I'm going to have you to sing that song uh, and play the song in just a minute. But uh, uh, I just want to uh, say something here. Um, you know, a song that has meant a lot to me over the years is Shout to the Lord. God has blessed me to... Uh, and I, I say not using a name here to, for any other reason than need to, but Darlene Check, when she wrote that song, Shout to the Lord. Um, and she, I've had a privilege for her to lead worship from my conference in uh, Rwanda, Africa. Uh, yeah, that was a great, um, a, a great big uh, blessing when, well, Darlene Check, she said, we're doing a, a hundred days of hope in Rwanda because that's where the genocide was for a hundred days and, oh. and they killed over a million people, mm. around a million people. And so Darlene Check, her and her husband Mark, they went there and they said, we want to bring a hundred days of hope. And so they had different people to come in. They had doctors to come in. They had all kinds of things going in. They said, but we want to do a pastor's conference. And she said, uh, Pastor Don, I don't know how to do a pastor's conference, but I know that's what you specialize in is doing pastor's conference. She said, if you'll do a pastor's conference here, she said, I'll lead the worship. So um, we did, and I wish I'd have had a little clip here. We had 30-something hundred pastors that showed up in that uh, conference Wonderful. in Rwanda. But she was talking to me about this song, Shout to the Lord. And um, she wrote that song. She said, I had an old piano. Uh, I believe it's her mother or grandmother gave it to her. I don't remember. It's an old piano. And she said, I was sitting down there and just twinkling on the keys. And she said, but all at once, the, the, the anointing just came. She said, the anointing came and the words to that song came. And she said, I didn't intend for this song to go around the world and bless all the people that it's blessed. She said, I just wrote the song because it came to me. And so that's the way God is. Mm -hmm. Just like tonight, I believe when you play this next song, I believe the Holy Spirit is really going to minister to somebody. And this, in the, her song, she put, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there's none like you. Mm -hmm. All of my days, I want to praise you. Hallelujah. The wonders of your mighty love, my comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. And then here's the chorus. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let us sing power and majesty. Praise to the kings. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you. Forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm holding Art off here just for a moment because I want him. Art, why don't you go ahead and get up there and get ready while I'm just finishing up preaching here just a little bit. And uh, as, as he plays this next song, sings, whatever he does, uh, I want you to open your heart. I want you to open your heart. God didn't give any of these songs that he's playing or singing or I just talked about Darlin' Check and there's plenty of I mean, songwriters and musicians. God doesn't give us songs to sing about Jesus. Just to, just, just to give them. He gives them for us to give praise and glory to God. And I really do appreciate songs that has Jesus in it. That has Savior in it. That has uh, mention of, of something that uh, identifies with salvation. And Shout to the Lord is one of those songs. And it has gone around the world. And, and millions of these uh, uh, albums have been sold. So tonight we're shouting to the Lord. I want you to shout right there where you are. If you've got something going on in your life, just begin to shout and just begin to praise God. You say, well, I don't feel like it. Well, it's not about feeling. It's not about feeling. When I was talking about Art and his wife, uh, many times uh, I know he didn't feel like giving praise to the Lord after his wife passed on. But he knew the only way to do that was to move beyond the pain, was to give God glory. N notice, my comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. We're here to worship. We're here to worship. And so as Art plays this next song, I want you to let the Holy Spirit go through you right now. What you going to do, Art? Give thanks. 
give thanks. Oh, wow. I want the folks like, like you were just saying. You know, you don't look at the problem. You don't look at the situation. You look at the Lord and you say, thank you, God. Not for the sickness or the illness or anything, but thank you, God, for who you are. Hallelujah. Thank you for you are the Holy One. Hallelujah. Thank you for what Jesus has done. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Because of what the Lord has done for you and me. Listen to these lyrics of these words. And if you're poor, say I am rich. Get in that word of God. Take that richness out. Because of what he has done for you. It's in the word, folks. I love that song, Give Thanks to the Holy One. I don't know 
I don't really remember who wrote the song, how old that song is, but it never gets old to me. That is a song that refreshes me every time I, I can't sing, but every time I'm where the song is being played or they're singing the song and I get to join in and drown my voice. Uh, I'm just telling you, God is doing something right now. God is doing yes. something right now. There's something about giving thanks. You know, when the, we talked at the beginning of the program, when the children of Israel walked around that wall yes. and they began to shout, what a sound that must have been. Mm. What a sight that must have been, on. <laughs> what are they doing out there? <laughs> what are they doing out there? Yeah. And then those walls disintegrated as we were talking about earlier. The walls disintegrated. Came tumbling down. Mm. Not over. They just did down. I mean, there was nothing left. And you know, uh, I just believe that's what's happening with people I right now. Too. Strongholds are being broken. Yes. Hallelujah. Strongholds are being broken right now. You know, we were, I was talking a minute ago about how people are angry and they get angry issues. And, but this is a time to let go. This is a time to let the Holy Spirit just minister to you wherever you are. And I just ask right now that, uh, Art, why don't you just pray a prayer for everybody that's viewing that what, whatever it is that they need, why don't you just look in the camera and pray and ask God to just touch the people. And then um, before we finish here, I'm sure you've got another song. You've got one more we can do before. One we of your favorites. <laughs> no, one of my favorites. I'm ready. Well, I just want to say today's your day. You didn't tune into this because I'm the greatest saxophone player in the world because I'm not. There's always somebody better, better looking. However, you know, I, I, did, I, did, I did primp up a little bit, but this is your day. This is your day. And you need to make a decision right now, whether it's healing, deliverance, or salvation. You need to listen to what I'm going to say right now. If it's salvation, all you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Just say that right now. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. As Lord. As Lord. To rule over my life to give me give me understanding give me guidance Lord give me guidance and understanding yes Lord and Savior Lord and Savior Savior that I might be in heaven Savior that I might be in heaven hallelujah and I'll bet you you know somebody that's in heaven and they're waiting for you amen but I want to speak to those of you that have a need a physical need you know I don't know why I called my friend, my beloved pastor over here when my wife died. He said, Art, just keep moving forward. Don't ask why. Just find God. That sweet spot. I never will forget that. That sweet spot. As you read through the Bible, there will be a sweet spot. And that's what God wants you to do. That word of God, sometimes I've had people say that they get to a point, Pastor, and all of a sudden, it's like honey in their mouth. They'll say, read the word, and they say, what is, that's your sweet spot. That might be where God's calling you. But I want you to just reach your hand out to, these, to that camera, that Facebook, whatever, and I just want you to receive. And just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your power. And we know you're coming soon again, and we rejoice, and we give you thanks for the Holy One. Thanks for what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Just think of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Pastor, for allowing well, me to Well, you pray. know, um, in the hardest trials, in the worst times of your life, if you can just say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. 
not for your hard times, not for your problems, not when your body is going through physical problems and it seems like it's all you can do to say a word. Instead of complaining and saying, I feel bad, because people can say that. I heard over here, oh man, this is so bad. I'm so angry. They, they say all those kind of things, but it's better to just say, thank you, Jesus, because you, say, you, you went to the cross. You took, you took my sins. You took the beating. You took everything from me. And just thank him. Yes. And as you begin to give thanks, as you begin to shout to the Lord, as those walls fail in Jericho, your walls will begin to fall down and God will begin to do something Amen. for you. Amen. Amen. I know that sometimes we don't know well, why is this happening? What is this? And I, I'm reminded of a, of a uh, little humor that uh, you said one time. You said, uh, the guy went to the doctor, you know, and he was in pain. He didn't know why. And he said, doctor, I said, when I touch over here, it hurts. And he said, when I touch over here, it hurts. You know, and he said, when I touch down on my knee, it hurts. His doctor said, wait a second. Looked at his finger and says, your finger's broke. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know why, but we know who is blesser. Who is the blesser? Amen. <laughs> and it might be your finger. That's, that's right. Broke. That's right. <laughs> you know? Well, I'm telling you, I'm just so blessed tonight with the goodness of God. And, Amen. And you know, Psalms 95, and I want you to get ready. Or why don't you just go ahead and get ready? I don't know what you're going to do. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. We all are going to fly away one day. And Pastor. Yeah. You will hear that uh, shout. Pastor Gary, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, the more mature I get, the more ready I get to go. I mean, I'm not asking God to send the bus and the, and the shofar today or tomorrow, but uh, I'm looking forward to that day. And the Bible says in Psalm 95, uh, verse 1, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. So, it's time to shout. It's time to give praise to God. With all the trouble that's going on in the world, all the trouble that's going on around you, just give a shout of praise to God. Make the devil nervous. Make the devil mad and let him know <laughs> that you are not defeated. He's the one that's defeated. He was defeated 2,000 years ago at Calvary. So take your place. Take your stand. Stand on that rock. Give thanks to God. Don't be defeated. Don't retreat. Don't surrender. Don't give in but take the word of God it's alive it's active it's sharper than any two-edged sword so the words in your mouth it's in your heart speak that word out give praise and glory to God and no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper well I, you know me I can preach but uh, I want to hear you uh, play this song all right
One of these days, we're all going to go flying away. Jesus is going to come. He's going to be blowing that shofar. And when he blows that shofar, it's going to be something else. You know, uh, uh, we got a lot of people from Trinidad watching us tonight, Art. And uh, uh, one of the pastors, the pastor's wife down there, she said, that was so beautiful, especially the shofar. So get ready because Art just got up again with the shofar. And uh, as he, he gets, he, as he blows this horn, this will be the last time for tonight now that he's going to blow this horn. So you get ready and it's loud, but you get ready for those shackles. You get ready for those bondages. You get yeah. ready for yes. those chains Hallelujah. to fall Hallelujah. off of you. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Tonight's a night of healing. Tonight's a night of increase. Tonight is a night of blessing. Tonight's a night of encouragement. You're moving on. You're moving up. You're not going to look back. You're not going to go backwards. You're not going to turn around and cry over something. You can't change. You're taking the word of God and saying, my life is before me. It's not behind me. Your life is no longer behind you. It's before you. So get ready. Step up. And here's Art standing over here. So let's get ready for one more time. A shout from this shofar. Praise God, that was awesome. That was awesome. Art, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And all of you that's watching, I do believe this is a night of increase. Now, I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, release my latest book. You know, the Lord has blessed me to, to do a number of books. One of my books, uh, this is the book they're putting up right now, Seven Principles of Godly Increase. This book, you can't buy it right now. You can't get it right now. But I'm going to give you a lunch date real soon. I'm wanting you to get ready because I'm going to give you five days. And you can download the book wherever you are in the world. You know, a lot of times people can't get a book because they live in another country. And we have people from the Philippines, from uh, all, uh, India, and all these places that watch us. So I decided, and I'm not going to sell this book. I may later, but I'm going to give it away. And, but there's going to be a five-day period, and I'm going to give you the launch date, seven principles of godly increase. Increase is not just finances. Increase comes in many different ways. And so I've written this book. I'm telling you, I'm excited about it. It's anointed, and I believe God is going to bless you. So, uh, Danielle, if you could just put it up there one more time. I want people to see this book one more time. We're getting ready. It's written, it's, it's finished, and it's sitting on Amazon right now. And, and real soon, all you're going to have to do is touch a button and download this book free of charge. And I'm going to give you the launch date uh, real soon of when we're going to do this. Anyway, uh, Art, as we, we, we close out here, um, I just want to say... Thank you. It's a privilege to work with you. You know, all those years we worked together and, you know, sometimes at night on Sunday nights, we would just have you, you in the band. <laughs> I'm telling you, Tommy on that oh, organ. Tommy Young, Jimmy Kelly, and Jimmy Ed Garcia, Kelly. And yeah. Keith Jordan on trumpet. And I'm telling you, it was something else. I mean, that music would get going and we would get to have in church and, and uh, it'd just be, uh, it'd just be awesome. And so tonight I got reminded just a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Can I say something about your book? Sure. You're saying five days. I think everybody needs to be obedient to that five days. You know, when I was working uh, on Pastor Gary's uh, wife's uh, uh, sister's farm, they had a slogan, and that was, hit the cow while the iron's hot. You're giving them five days to hit the cow that's while right. the iron's hot. That's right. That, that's tremendous. 
That's tremendous, and thank you for doing that from the bottom of my heart. I'm, I'm going to find out when the launch date is so, so I can download it. Well, you know, Of course, I'll, you can send in an offering if you want. You well, know? Yeah, they can. They can, and you can tonight if you want to. You know, you can uh, just go to uh, uh, our website, uh, donclowers.com. You can just go to donclowers.com, and uh, you that's watching on Lightcast, you can see right there what y'all did. There's a button there that says donate, so you Praise can God. do that. So uh, it's real simple to do, and you can send in an offering, and we'll appreciate it. We had someone call the office today and said, uh, I was watching the broadcast Sunday, and I got touched, and, and I just want to give that's an wonderful. offering. That's and, wonderful. Uh, so uh, I'm telling you, this is your night. And uh, Art has prayed, but I'm going to pray one more time Amen. and just believe God. Art, once again, thank you. And Tom from over in Chattanooga joining. Hey, how are you, Tom, you and Tiki? Y'all are great friends. And, and uh, your wife, you know, is just uh, so anointed. So are you, Tom. Y'all are just a great blessing. Pastor Cliff Cook over in Kingsport, Tennessee. All of you that's joining, I don't have time. I saw so many people that came on. I can't just mention your names, but I want to pray for everybody that's apart one more time that no weapon that's been forming against you yes. can stay in your life, but that you're going to walk forward in faith. Now, Lord, I thank you for tonight, for the music, for the thank songs, you. for the anointing upon Art Osborne to, to uh, bring to the people. You, God, you've anointed him and touched their lives, and I pray, Lord, that as we close this broadcast tonight, you, you, you will just speak and minister in a way, Lord, that people will know this was not just two people sitting here talking and playing music, but it was a time that your glory, that your anointing was released. And I believe healing is taking place right now. Healing for whatever you need. Restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing of a broken heart. Healing of a wound mm -hmm. somewhere that somebody has hurt you and you've cured this wound. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yes. you're healed and you're made whole. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Pastor Don, I'd like for you to pray for me. Because I know, you know, after Kathy passed and I had spent so many years at her bedside, you know, and couldn't get out. And I know God's released me back out. I ministered with Pastor Gary and last Sunday at uh, Cornerstone Church. Uh, and hopefully we're going to be doing some more things together. Yes. And, yeah, and exactly. I just and I just want your prayers. And Pastor Gary, while he, while he prays, I'd like for you to pray too that the anointing would uh, be sensed by the people. And I know that I'll be going out with you and going out with Gary, but I'll also be going out there's probably somebody at church that might want me to come sure. and do a seminar about music and everything. And I'd like for you to lay your hands on me and just pray for me and just, just open those doors. Well, I'll, I'll do that. And, and also, uh, Ivy, I will be praying for Chanel right now. We're going to pray for her, too. We're going to pray for Art. But, <clears throat> Art, I, I, just, I just believe, you know, the, the years that you spent by Kathy's bedside and uh, you were there. God saw that, and he saw your heart. Yes. And um, you're like me. I, I, I'm, I'm older than you, of course, but uh, we're not, not by done. Not much. <laughs> but we're not done. No, you? no. See, that's what some people think. They think because you get a little years on you sometimes that you're not fresh. But there's experience. There's Which, seasoning. Yeah. And this man is seasoned in the Lord, seasoned in the oh, anointing. Thank you. Father, I thank you. Lord, for each person that you called and anointed. And I'm sitting here with one that you've called and you've anointed. Not only have you anointed him to speak the word, but Lord, you've anointed him to play these instruments. And as he plays these instruments, Lord, he plays from his heart. Not just to hear the sound himself, but for that sound to go forth. And break the cha chains and the yokes and the powers of darkness that's come against people. And to release the anointing of healing. Yes. As David played his heart. Yes. And the yeah. demon spirits had to go. Father, you've anointed my brother Art Osborne Hallelujah. to play these instruments, to teach your word. And I pray, Lord, that yes. 
doors are open like never before. Lord, he's been with some of the greats, played with some of the greats. And I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that those Amen. pastors, some of them that's watching right now, they may want to call tonight, tomorrow, text, and say, I want that in my church. If it's oh. nothing but for a Sunday morning, a oh. Sunday night, or, you, or something like that, Lord, I just pray. Mm. And God, the anointing will be greater on art. Thank you, Lord. Father, I believe the anointing... All right, I sense this right now. I, feel I prophesy to you that the anointing mm. is going to be greater on you. Stop. You've had it on you. You know, we've talked about yes. when you were in Israel. Hallelujah. We talked about on the satellite seminars how oh. God used you. And But I'm mm. telling you, this is the time that the anointing is going to be stronger and greater on you. <laughs> and and it's going to be like many years put together yes. in, one, in one time. Many years of of how you, God has used you, it's going to be one time the power is going to fall on you and use you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. And Father, I pray for Shanae uh, down in Trinidad yes. right now. I just pray that you touch her. I pray for Gloria yes. uh, right now that that wound will be healed and the anointing will come up on yes, Gloria Lord. right now. Yes, In Lord. Jesus' name Jesus. we pray. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank wow. you, brother. <laughs> well, as you can see, we didn't rehearse anything. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't rehearse anything. We just come here and sit down and did this. And, Art, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being my friend. And oh, absolutely. Working yeah, and vice with versa. Me. And uh, we're going to do this again, um, if you'll do it again with uh, me. Absolutely. I'm, I want I'm, having to... a, I'm having a lot of fun. You know, <laughs> uh, We're supposed to have fun, right? That's what, what should we are. <laughs> That's what it's all about. And I loved every song you sang and and I like the one they closed with, I'll fly away. <laughs> uh, one of these days, it's going to happen. Amen. 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 Well, thank you again, Art. Thank, thank you, you for everybody that has joined in with us. And I'll be looking forward for you joining in with us and to hear testimonies of how God has touched you. So text me, let me know, private message me on Facebook, or you can text me here on our website and, and let me know what God has done for you. God bless you.